Our scripture reading and sermon for today will follow roughly this outline, insights, question, and application. And so as we read the scripture, keep those things in mind. What's interesting, the insights? What's confusing? What questions do you have? And then application, how does it apply to our lives? But before we get to that, we have a couple of warm-up questions. So you can find some neighbors and talk and, and, uh, and, and get interacting here. So I've got a few questions. Would you rather wear a chef's hat or an apron to the grocery store? Talk to your neighbor. Tell them what do you think. What's it going to be? You're going to the grocery store, chef's hat or an apron? Which is it going to be? Got it figured out? You can't think too hard about it. Okay, if you're going to go for the chef's hat, raise your hand. If you're going for the chef's hat. Apron, who's going to wear the apron? Well, you may as well wear an apron, chef's hat. Okay, good, here we are. A couple more. Would you rather wear your pajamas or a superhero costume downtown Evansville? Your pajamas or a superhero costume downtown Evansville? What do you think? Is it toss-up? Easy? Hard question? What do you think? Okay, who's going for their pajamas? All right. Who's going to go for a superhero costume? Oh, surprise. Okay, more on the pajamas, huh? All right. Would you rather... Wear shorts in the winter or a snowsuit in the summer? What do you think? What do you think? Do you like being hot or do you like being cold? Shorts in the winter or snowsuit in the summer? Shorts in the winter. Raise your hand. Snowsuit in the summer. No one, oh, there are a few takers. All right, good job. Harrison's going to have that snowsuit on. All right, good job. All right, now move away from the would you rather question. One last question. If you were on an island, you know how these questions grow. If you were on an island, what resource or tool outside of food or water would you like to have with you? What resource or tool would you like to have with you on an island? Well, it's probably a deserted island, too. We better add that in there as well. What is it? What do you want to have if you're on a deserted island? Resource or tool? Talk it over with your neighbor. Don't think too hard about it. What do you think would be really useful? What's going to be really life-saving and useful on that island? Okay, shout it out a little bit. A knife, it's a good idea. What do you think? What? A machete. All right, flint. What? A hammock. I like that. A snorkel mask and fins, right? <laughs> Get off the island, yeah. A cell phone. Well, good. Hope electricity's there. A boat. A boat would help. All right, good, good. Okay, so we're thinking about what we would wear. We're thinking about what we need in life. So now we're going to turn our attention to Ephesians chapter 6. It's page 952 in your pew Bible. 952. It's the black Bible in your pew. I tell you, you're going to want to have it open because we're going to look at it together and we're going to look for what's interesting there and what's confusing. 952 in your Bible. A little bit of background before we read it. This letter over these six verses, has declared the love and grace of God for all people. And it's encouraged God's people to live in peace with each other and to work in unity. Well, our reading for today, chapter 6, comes at the close of the letter, and it gives the members of the church encouragement to be strong in the Lord. That's what we're going to read today. Now, keep in mind that this was written at a time in history when Christians were in physical danger for their lives from the Roman Empire. Those early believers faced a lot of struggles that were beyond their capacity. And today, too, we face a lot of struggles that are beyond our capacity as well. And in the midst of life troubles, we don't have to just fold or flee, and we don't even have to fight. We have another option. We can stand firm in the Lord. They have the armor of God to stand in the face of evil, and so do we. We have the armor of God. That's what we're going to hear about. This letter draws on common military language of the day to speak about God's armor for us. So here we go. Listen to these words from Ephesians 6. Follow along and notice key words or phrases that connect to you. Here we go. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, A message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, keep your Bibles open, I'd recommend, and turn to your neighbor and talk about what's interesting and what's confusing, insights and questions. I'll give you a minute. Go for it. Okay, that's your minute. What words or phrases connect to you are interesting or confusing? This sermon's only as good as your participation with it. So what do you got? Yeah, Sue. Yeah, good. We should look at all the tools that he gives us. Why don't we just look little by little? Let's go through them. Where do the, where, the armor starts in verse 14, right? What's the first one listed there? Before that. The belt of truth, right? The belt of truth. So, so these are the gifts of God for us, and God gives us truth. We need truth in our lives. We need truth to know, to know who we are, to have a right understanding of who we are. Not that we're perfect and amazing, that we're also a sinner, but to have a right understanding uh, that we are loved by God and that God, to know who God is, to know the truth about God. Okay, the belt of truth. What's next? The breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is living in right ways, in ways that are good, in ways that have upstanding character. God gives us righteousness, leads us in paths of righteousness to do what is right and good. Okay, what's next? Shoes. Shoes for your feet that are ready to share God's peace with one another, right? Boy, wouldn't it be great if we walked in peace all the time, if our shoes were always peaceful, and instead, what are we we're walking in worries and burdens and troubles? But we get the peace of God in our lives. Okay, what's after the shoes? The shield of faith, verse 16. The shield of faith. Now, now this was an interesting metaphor. So Roman shields uh, were covered in leather so that they could be soaked in water and you could crouch and hide behind it so that flaming arrows would be extinguished as they hit the shield. So to think that we have the shield of faith, the, the, the faith to know that God is there for us, the faith, uh, the faith to know that, that we can trust God no matter what, that God is going to be faithful to us when those arrows are coming our way. Okay, what's next? Helmet of salvation, that's the fifth thing. Helmet of salvation. 
we, to live every day remembering that we are saved, that God has rescued us, saved us from sin, death, and the devil, the helmet of salvation, to know that every day, and not only saved us, but saved, saved one another, saved those around us, that we have the victory. Okay, number six is, sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. This is the only offensive piece of the armor. But a, but a sword can also be defensive, right? The Word of God. How well do we know God's Word? Now we're moving into a question here. How well do we know God's Word? Do we know the power that it has in our lives? It's going to help us to defend ourselves against the lies of the devil. Okay, and now it looks like that's the end of the armor, but I think there's one more. And it's not an image of a soldier, this last one, but it's right in the list, and seven is the number of completion. And it talks about praying in the Spirit. And I think that's also an offensive weapon, although it, it, it's certainly not aggressive. But that we have the power to talk to God. We can talk to mighty God to give us the strength that we need. Praying in the Spirit. Okay, well, we covered lots of things right there. What else is interesting or confusing to you? Ephesians chapter 6, these 10 verses. Yeah, go to, where, who, go to that enemies part, right? Our struggle, verse 12, our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, the authorities, the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's a little scary, isn't it? We don't often talk about this, that there is a force of darkness and evil at work in this world, and that our struggle is against them and not against each other. Boy, how easy it is to think that we're fighting each other, isn't it? We do. We have an interpersonal conflict, international conflict, and we think that our struggle is against flesh and blood, but it's not. We share the same struggle against the force of evil who's spreading lies among us. That's what the devil is. The devil is the master of lies, telling us that we don't have enough, that we are not enough, that we should be afraid, and so that, and we don't have to be afraid, but we believe these lies, and so I have, I'm working on my lies and my insecurities, and you're working on your lies and your insecurities, and, and so we think that we're fighting each other, but we're not. We're fighting a common battle against authorities and powers and, 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 and the forces of evil. Now, this is not something that we have to be afraid of. But we should be aware of it. You know, in that, uh, we have a baptism tomorrow. And, and, and we don't say that we believe in the devil. We, we should be aware of the devil. What we say in a baptism is we say that we renounce the devil. We should be aware that there is a force of evil. And to that, we need to say no every day. And that force of evil is trying to destroy, destroy us. Now, we can... We can uh, lead to two errors on this. We should not, not spend too much time thinking about the devil and the force of evil and be preoccupied with that and be afraid of it. But on the other side, we shouldn't avoid it either. We should live somewhere in the middle, aware of it, renouncing it, and claiming the victory that's ours in Jesus Christ. Something else in our reading that's interesting, insights or questions. Persevere. That's a great word, right? That we may persevere. You know, and on our own, we don't have the power to persevere. We need that from the Lord. The Lord is who's going to help us persevere for whatever we're facing. Any other key words, questions? The mystery of the gospel. I noticed that too. Now, where is that? That's a little bit later. Um, 19. That's in... Uh, uh, if Paul is writing this, the Apostle Paul, he's asking for prayers that he may uh, declare boldly the mystery of the gospel, which is a good, uh, before we look at the mystery of the gospel, if the sermon's ever not going well, start praying, okay? Because here the Apostle Paul, he's asking for prayers for preaching, okay? And, and he talks about the mystery of the gospel, which is to say that we aren't ever totally going to understand the greatness 
of Christ's sacrifice for us and, and, and the depth of God's love for us. It's a mystery that we continue to explore together, the mystery of the gospel. Yeah, I heard something over here. With supplication. Okay, that's a tricky word. Uh, that's also in that uh, uh, latter part, verse 18. Persevere in supplication for all the saints. This is a request, a request for God to supply. When I come against that word supplication, you can, you can shrink it up and go supply. A request for God to supply what it is that you need. Yeah, thank you. Put on the whole armor of God. He says it twice, right? Uh, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. And then verse 13, so take up the whole armor of God. Do not forget the helmet. Don't forget the belt, whatever it is. Put, put on all of this armor. And friends, you're not going to outgrow this armor. This armor is going to grow with you. We need to, we want to have all of this armor on, which leads me to a question. Which part of the armor are we forgetting? Which part of the armor do we maybe need to dust off and put on that we can have all the gifts of God for us in our lives? Anything else? We covered it pretty good. An ambassador in chains. That's nice. Um, that, so that the Apostle Paul is writing this probably from prison in Rome. Um, and, and it's a paradox there. He's praying for boldness and freedom to preach the gospel when he is a prisoner. And that's pretty powerful, that, that no matter what our situation in life, we're all at different times captive to different things in chains, but that we can still live in freedom in Christ and be an ambassador for God. We've covered some questions in there already. One, one other question that I had is, is who is Paul writing to? And we have to look at the Greek to really understand that. All these verbs, we don't get this in English. They're plural. And so we could read it, uh, we could read it kind of like, um, um, like all y'all take up the armor of God. All y'all put on the belt of truth. These are all plurals, that we do this together. It's not just me over here with my armor on, but it's we here together with our armor on. And I think that's pretty powerful, that we don't persevere by ourselves, we persevere together. Okay, so let's bring this home a little bit. Application, uh, what does all this mean for us today? And and as I read this, we've talked about this already. We're all facing a battle, aren't we? Have you heard that before? Everyone's, everyone's facing a battle. Everyone's fighting a battle. We all face our struggles in our lives. And it might seem like it's against another person, but really it's against, it's against lies and fears and insecurity and, and arrogance. And, and that's inside all of us and that's inside each other. It's in us and it's in them. And it is so tempting to pick your battle against another person. We don't need to do that. That's not, that's not our enemy. Let's fight together with Christ as our champion and know that there's more going on than we can see. Every time it talks about the pieces of armor, it says put on or take up. These are all gifts of God for us. These are all given to you. Truth and faith and salvation. These aren't something you have to earn or purchase. It's like when my parents come to town. They're here visiting today. They bring gifts for my kids. You don't have to do this all the time, by the way. And they brought clothes. They brought gifts of clothes. And my kids, all they have to do is put it on. It's already theirs. These, these gifts of God, they are yours. And they are mine. And with these gifts and with God, we can stand. We will be strong. We have the victory. We don't need to be afraid. We have all that we need to stand against evil. And our mighty God 
will give us the victory over sin, over death, over the devil, and will give us the crown of life today and forever. Amen.